young uh, and very creatively talented writer Hindol, my good friends Amit Malviya and uh, all others uh, gathered over here. While uh, I must at the outset share with you that I am not an, not an economist and this particular subject which has been given to me has uh, several things to do with uh, economics as such. But when I talk about economics and especially the century old discourse about left and right, firstly I remember what Cho Ramaswamy had once said. He had once very famously said, that if left have any future in India, India has no future left. And that uh, was a very <laughs> subtle comment, perhaps uh, telling us about the future of our country and the direction that which we have to take. But while on the one hand it is true that if left has any future, we don't have any future left, the popularity and the centrality in the discourse world over about what could be described as leftism, perhaps uh, one cannot ignore. Just in lighter vein, I must share with you, I will, I'll these days live in uh, South Avenue and to reach over here, I was coming via Vijay Chowk from where, I mean, you come from South Avenue and you cross the Vijay Chowk and take the Parliament Street. And at that particular point, it has been written, mentioned very clearly, that left is free. <laughs> and if you turn left, you go to the Rashtrapati Bhavan. <laughs> and of course, the South Block, North Block and everything. So, unfortunately, to turn to left, for decades together was appeared as a shortcut to power. And we thrived and the entire polity also was gaga over this so-called leftism as such. And on a scenario of this kind, suddenly there was first liberalization about 25 years before and now in 2014 we had a government which had some of the fundamentals about the nation's economy very clear in its mind. Maybe you must have already come across, but in 2014, after Sri Narendra Modi ji's victory, some uh, four days thereafter, three, two days thereafter, on 18th May 2014, Guardian published an editorial and it said that perhaps now Britishers will have to finally leave India. So the idea was in their mind as well and see it is coming from Guardian that all along post independence all these years it was the British legacy that was allowed to be continued and now it will be a break. So the expectations not only at the popular level but at the level of intelligentsia, at the level of opinion makers. All these expectations also were very high and on that backdrop this government took over. Now for the adversaries of this government it was very easy to paint it as anti-development, uh, sorry anti-poor because all the talk about development was unfortunately, I mean, it has become a fashion in our country to portray anything non-left as anti-people as well. And the task that was cut out before this government was to establish that to be pro-poor, you have to be pro-development. And that is what I would say during the last uh, over 25 months, this government has been trying to do. And therefore, we thought it fit that here is a gathering of uh, 
talented writers, bloggers who are very active not only in social media but other media as well. So let us share with them as to what this government has done basically for the weaker sections, for the marginalized sections, for those who have always been ignored by the polity, by the economy of, for decades together. And let us understand how the concept of Antyodaya, really speaking, is at the core of the policy perspectives that have been unveiled by this government during the last 25-26 months. But then what exactly is the policy framework with which this government has moved ahead? And before visiting that, let us also have a look at what exactly is this Antyodaya all about. Let me tell you, Antyodaya, the concept, finds reference in the writings of Mahatma Gandhi, Dindayal Upadhyaya and several others. And literally it means putting the last man in the line, in the queue, who is naturally, being, is that he is at the last, at the fag end of the queue, naturally he is... Uh, not capable enough, naturally he is very weak, naturally he is very backward, naturally he has been deprived and denied all along and to put it, put that particular person, him or her, at the front of the queue of the distribution network, that is what is Antyodaya. So the least or the most deprived should get the most attention, to be very simple about it. The most deprived, the most ignored should get the most attention. He should be brought first. And from the, him or her, the distribution of government benefits should start. So that is how the concept of Antyodaya. And therefore, equal opportunity to all, naturally it is inherent to that. Inclusive development is again very inherent to the concept of Antyodaya, although I have uh, a little disagreement with the term inclusive which was sought to be popularized during the pre-Modi era because I believe inclusive is a very condescending term. It has to be participative and as I would be explaining you, the emphasis of this government has been on people's participation all along. And therefore, Antyodaya also involves inclusion or participation and ensuring social justice and welfare, which in a way sounds very cliche, but if you try to translate it with some innovative, out-of-the-box ideas, it becomes a fact of life, how we are going to see here, here onwards. Next. There are certain prerequisites of Antyodaya, as I said, because Antyodaya essentially deals with uh, your mental frame as well. It's not just in policy, it, it, it is not just in implementation mechanism, yes, that is important. But you conceive a policy which is Antyodaya-centric or Antyodaya-oriented and you evolve an implementation infrastructure which is more towards the most deprived sections of the society only if you have that particular feeling, that particular sensitivity, that particular approach, which is very required. And therefore, the prerequisites of Antyodaya, number one, at the policy level, number two, at the governance level, because you have to implement it, and number three, at the popular level as well. See, any kind of uh, positive discrimination or social justice agenda cannot, this is what I understand as, as a student of social science, cannot be successful without people joining it, without people adopting it, without people owning it. Mere governmental efforts have their own limitations. And which is why the centrality of people's participation in every other welfare uh, scheme or welfare mechanism or project or program or whatever. So these are the fundamentals about Antyodaya and the prerequisite of Antyodaya. Now let us go to the policy framework that was, that was ado adopted by Modi Sarkar. What are the key features of Modi Sarkar's policy insights? 
Firstly, sensitivity towards the poor and the marginalized. This is very, 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 very important. Yes, this government is definitely pro-industry because it wants many more hands to be given jobs. Without industry, you cannot do it. Yes, this government wants investment because it wants industry to come up because ultimately it is going to help the job market. So, there need not be any apologetic uh, kind of approach towards being pro-industry. We are pro-industry, we are pro-investment, we are pro-liberalization for that matter because we are essentially pro-poor. Secondly, public participation through connectivity and dialogue. As I said, this also is one of the fundamentals of the policy insights evolved during the last uh, and which are there for all of us to see during the last 26, 27 months or so. Thirdly, strict no to populism, no shortcuts. It is very easy to rule via populism and uh, as this government and its leaders have always been saying so that in our country every now and then there is some election or the other at the corner and therefore we all go into that electoral mode which incapacitates the government to take any bold so-called unpopular because seemingly unpopular in short term which are unpopular decisions. So this government has turned its back to populism and shortcuts and set its eyes on longer term goals. Fourthly, strengthening implementation infrastructure. There is one word missing over there. It is not just about infrastructure. It is that we are strengthening. But essentially, I am wanting to talk to you about strengthening the implementation infrastructure and how this government is doing, we will try to find out. And lastly, unblemished governments. See, corruption is one of the most anti-poor kind of major. I mean, if, if, if a government is known for corruption, it is cert certainly anti-poor. You need not even uh, talk about it. Corruption itself is against the interest of the poor, of the marginalized, of the deprived sections, and therefore that is for their everybody to see. Now, let's go one by one. There are certain examples given on the in the presentation, I am not going to go by that. You may get a copy of the presentation uh, via email or whatever. I am just flagging certain very concrete things which may not be here as well. Talking about sensitivity and I would like to rush through because what I am essentially going to share here is substantiate these five policy features which I have shared with you with several examples which all of us know but we need to present it in a structured manner so, so that we can understand and develop some, some kind of a more deeper insight into that. In so far as sensitivity is concerned, we know about the Ujwala Yojana. Never before in our country this kind of a scheme was thought of and immediately implemented to give relief to those young and old women in rural areas, in tribal areas especially, who are below the poverty line and who have to face some kind of damage to their eyesight because of the smoke that comes out of the chula. And therefore, this particular scheme, Ujwala Yojana, I, I need not elaborate, we know everything, how uh, cooking gas is being provided to the below poverty line sections and in huge numbers, some 5 crore connections are going to be distributed and the work has already started. Then Udyami Yojana, Swachhata Udyami Yojana. Many times I hear uh, comments about the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, Swachh Bharat campaign. But let me tell you, one of the cardinal features of this particular Swachh Bharat is to make those people also take broom in their hands who otherwise would like somebody else to do it for themselves. This is a great social assimilation mechanism as well. See, when you yourself soil your hands and do all kinds of menial works as well at times, then you realize the pain. So the way to Samajik Samarastha, social cohesion, passes through this. This message must not have come out so very loud and clear, but I believe as students of social science we should understand. Not only that, there is a Swachhata Udyami Yojana also. 
this government has been pushing and taking us towards uh, converting villages into open defecation free at the same time this government also has its has on its agenda somewhere at the top abolishing all manual toilets where some person human being has to clean the toilet and take all the night soil and carry it personally this has to be stopped and therefore the swachhata udyami yojana which gives and helps all those who are engaged in all these kinds of menial works find out some kind of an alternate employment opportunity crop insurance again with sensitivity at the core you know i mean we all are most of us i mean are living in uh, city areas you go and you purchase a house an apartment and you have it insured you purchase a vehicle a small car or a big car or whatever or a two wheeler and immediately you get an insurance but what about that farmer who is putting all his efforts and waiting for the crop to grow and praying to the god because he is helpless this particular crop pradhan mantri crop insurance scheme is uh, so very comprehensively conceived that at any point of threat that a standing crop might be facing even before the crop before the uh, field is prepared or immediately there after that even after sowing if the crop doesn't come up you get an insurance the crop has already come up but certain things happen and then uh, maybe unseasonal rains or any other kind of thing and you face some damage you get some insurance you have the crop ready and you have stored it somewhere maybe in your field openly and all of a sudden there are rains you get some insurance cover you are carrying the crop in a tempo and while taking it to the market the vehicle faces an unfortunate accident the crop goes west you get an insurance so at every level of the life cycle of the crop insurance cover has been provided at a very very minimum kind of uh, premium which is again as i said a manifestation of the sensitivity towards the poor towards the marginalized i can cite you an example of the accessibility india campaign you know i mean uh, accessibility is a big issue and especially in our country where uh, the 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 percentage of uh, physically challenged divyang is not very low so how do we do that this government when there is a particular person with sensitivity at its core our minister for social justice under whom this department comes all these years till 2014 distribution of uh, artificial limbs has always been there on the agenda of the government and the government is expected to conduct camps with the help of voluntary organizations at various places and distribute limbs free jaipur food and all those kinds of things all these years the number of such camps organized in a span of an year used to be just somewhere between 100 150 during the last two years 14 15 15 16 the number had seen a 12 fold increase and some 1800 camps have been organized this is sensitivity and therefore all these examples are pointers towards the essential characteristic of this government's policy approach which is sensitivity to the poor and the marginalized i cannot uh, elaborately tell you about how the prime minister decided to go to japan and visit an expert who is uh, who, who is known for his expertise in sickle cell and the medicine that is required to treat sickle cell patients he went there personally brought the technology which is now being implemented here so all these examples now coming to the other aspect which is uh, connectivity with the people dialogue with the people and emphasis on people's participation we know all these years before 2014 that the prime minister used to talk to the people his own countrymen only maybe twice through some kind of an address to the nation 
on the eve of independence day and maybe even the republic day now here is a prime minister who talks to you visits you meets you enters your house practically every month through man ki baat and essentially the man ki baat is jan ki baat because the content of the man ki baat is most of the times crowd sourced he himself asks there are appeals to the people to tell him to suggest as to what are the issues on which they would like their leader to be opining to be speaking about and therefore this connectivity dialogue extremely important in a democratic polity which as i said has its emphasis on people's participation again we have seen number of examples of how the railway ministry is very attentive to the complaints which they receive through twitter and facebook and social media and there the grievances are redressed i mean all kinds of uh, measures are taken to ensure that whosoever approaches via twitter and facebook and other social media is responded immediately responsiveness is one of the key features of uh, good governance and that is being done innovation there is emphasis on innovation as well there is a special cell working in the niti ayog and several other uh, issues several other examples or also could be given for want of time i'll just limit myself to these three four essential points but basically this government wants people to be holding hands with the policy implementers with the people in the government and through their participation one small thing this adarsh gram yojana was there for ages maybe since 90 the adarsh gram yojana is there but the essential distinctive feature that was introduced after this government took over was to make it sansad adarsh gram yojana so that now there is some definite ownership of it unless people own it unless their representatives own it things are not going to move and therefore of course success is not something which is guaranteed but at least now there is a mechanism there is a thinking towards that thirdly about a firm no to populism we know about deregulation of petroleum products which was introduced first time during atal bihari vajpayee ji's government but thereafter we saw 10 years of populism and two steps forward two steps backward that kind of a thing went on and what was deregulated was again regulated simply because it was seen as a populist measure and the government backtracked at that point of time now again there is a total deregulation market forces are controlling petrol and diesel prices and all petroleum product prices as we know every time post independence the railway budget was used as a populist uh, kind of mechanism to declare few railway lines and maybe half a dozen or more new trains which was abusing the occasion of independent railway budget presentation of it rather and therefore this government steadfastly and very courageously said no more announcements of new trains and new railway tracks enough of it we will cultivate on whatever we have already done and therefore this was a very courageous decision let me tell you because people were accustomed and not only people their representative sitting in the lok sabha and rajya sabha were also equally keen and empathetic but then the government said that we will not allow this to be going any further biometric attendance you know i mean we had its uh, impact seen in the delhi elections because most of the government employees who live in delhi uh, were a little inconvenienced to this biometric attendance but then if you decide to take some decisions in the interest of the people political uh, aftermath of it also you have to take into consideration I mean, it, it happens that way but you have to go that way we 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 saw during the last i mean pre modi 10 years a regime which was uh, which uh, the people manning that particular government were uh, quite indulgent in advertising as a right based approach right based approach and therefore right to education right right to freedom from hunger or food security and all these things were there we are not against it but we also know and we know it very well 
they simply by giving right to education people are not going to get education freely and easily in fact it has a converse impact and there are many anti rti activists over here and all of us are aware that uh, brick clean uh, laborers who are working in various parts of the country who wanted some kind of uh, a school mechanism which is very liberal which is very accommodative they had to close down their schools in maharashtra we have sugar cane cutters and their uh, kids going in informal schools they were also kind of forced to close them down so all these negative aspects of right to education are i mean they are they are there for everybody to see because we know that simply by giving right things are not going to move we have to create a condition where even without a right you can ensure that things are translated into reality and people get the benefit we didn't give any right to smile to the people but through mudra and several other schemes we thought it that people especially in the weaker sections schedule ka schedule tribes will be able to try their hand in entrepreneurship and we can bring some smile on their faces and that is what is happening mudra startup stand up our uh, milind kamale of the dalit industrial chamber of commerce and industries was telling me and if uh, you have not so far do visit the stand up india portal it's so very user friendly i mean never before you will come across a user friendly portal of that kind knowing fully well that the stand up india benefits have to go to the weaker sections the scheduled caste there may be uh, uneducated or uh, not sufficiently educated people also and they need to be provided everything in a very very easy manner and that is what has been done over there so start up stand up mudra giving loans to even women entrepreneurs for that matter simple thing self certification there was no kind of right to self certification not required you give that right people can attest their own document believe in the people if you believe in them people will start believing in you and that is what is happening so facilitating things in haryana our uh, bjp government introduce the provision that for fighting jila parishad and panchayat elections you have to be class 10 pass and you have to have a toilet in your house now there was a brouhaha over it this is anti democratic this is snatching the right to contest from the weaker sections and all those things now it is close to one year what are the results the number of women coming to the gram panchayats has increased 20% more the number of uh, latrines that were constructed during the span of 2 years has gone up to more than 60000 so the traditional way of looking at policy initiatives and policy framework have been altered in a very courageous manner last two points number 1 is unblemished governments and number five is implementation infrastructure in fact it is other way around number four is implementation infrastructure i can dwell at length but let me give you one single example and i am sure most of you must have seen those pictures on the television there is a particular program which uh, modi ji started it's a monthly review of all the implementation of government or centrally monitored centrally funded schemes which is called as pragati and you will see and it's it has been there on the television that the prime minister sits at one end of a big table all his department its secretaries are around on and on the screen in front of them a huge white screen a chief secretary of a state comes over there and one after the other all chief secretaries make their presence and explain them and here is a prime minister who keeps asking last month आपने ये कहा था कि ये फलाने फलाने रोड के लिए आपके स्टेट फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट का क्लियरेंस मिलेगा एक महीना हुआ क्लियरेंस का क्या हुआ एंड दे हैव टू वर्क नाउ देयर इज अ मैकेनिज्म देयर इज समबडी टू आस्क देम देयर इज समबडी टू पिन देम डाउन देयर इज समबडी टू सीक आंसर्स फ्रॉम देम सी आंसर एबिलिटी इज इंपॉर्टेंट बट इट वर्क्स व्हेन देयर इज समबडी टू क्वेश्चन एंड हियर इज अ लीडरशिप 
that questions because it has its own answers very clear and ready with it. And therefore, this element of answerability, element of accountability has been underscored and in all such areas, take the example of several ports under uh, Nitin Gadkari, there is this department of shipping and navigation. And most government ports for the first time after several years have registered profit. There is so much talk about Adani, but let me tell you that Adani port and there is a competing port which is the government port which is at Kandla. Nowadays there is a healthy competition between Adani port and Adani control port. I don't know what is the name of the port and Kandla port and Kandla has uh, taken over. Kandla has surpassed and Kandla is now attracting more business. So, not only JNPT, even Air India, I was told, has reported uh, uh, some amount of profit. They, there is a particular term to that, functional profit or something. Operation. Sorry, operational profit, right. So, things are changing because of a very strong implementation infrastructure which was put in place after this government took over. Lastly, unblemished performance. Two years or rather more than that, is not a small period. And the opposition, the media, all are our friends, and you know, none of them have been able to come out with any allegation of any scandal, any scam, any ghotala, anything of that kind. In olden days, they used to compose letters in the printing press. Perhaps, had that been the case, during the previous regime, those letters were used, I mean, they, they were compelled to use those kinds of things and terminologies at n number of times during the last two years. I don't think any time we have heard newspaper headlines telling us about any scam or scandal or whatever. Nothing. Unblemished performance. Not a single allegation. And not even the opposition has been able to gather any courage to make a wild allegation because they know that uh, people will react to it negatively. So all these things, I believe, we need to first understand and then uh, talk about it, write about it. But lastly, before I close, let me also share with you that the nationalist writers who are all of us gathered over here, to take this message, right? in the people, amongst the new readers, we also require to, first of all, understand and experience as well. And for that, for all the weaker sections, because many a times it so happens, although I don't want to make any generalization, but so-called right-wing writers come from a comparatively better financially section of the society. Comparatively. I am not wanting to generalize it. There are people who are from the economically weaker sections as well, but comparatively, generally speaking. And therefore, at times we fall short in evolving some kind of an element of empathy in our writing. Maybe because we lack an exposure as well. Maybe we have not experienced what is deprivation. Chances are. So I would suggest that let us also bring more sharpness to our pen by seeking some exposure to all these sections, in, in all these adverse, adverse conditions, experiencing, empathizing and thereafter expressing ourselves. If we can do this, I am sure whatever we write will become more powerful because otherwise all these things we have, we are finding expression in a different set of writers. As I have been saying this, that the new age Dalit literature, and you know India has a very strong tradition of Dalit literature, especially Marathi, my own mother tongue. But the new age Dalit literature, there is a book against all odds on the first generation Dalit entrepreneurs. If you haven't read it, I would recommend strongly that you should read it. How this struggle went on, how the government machineries helped them, what kind of obstacles were there, you get to know about it. I believe 
the dalit literature of tomorrow will be telling us these stories of entrepreneurs who have struggled and successfully struggled and come a long way therefore i would suggest that uh, the nationalist writers the nation first writers also need to evolve these elements of empathy through exposure and experience in their own writings so that the advocacy of the deprived sections of the society is not confined to a particular ideology thank you very much